Lads and ladies, welcome to the Junior Classics. Hi there, I'm Sir Bradley Hassey, a teller of borrowed tales. Join me as I share stories of courage, adventure, and wonder. But don't take my word for it. You can find out for yourself on today's Junior Classic. I'll tell you a story. I am a hundred years old. Ask him to bring you to the garden in the name of the Almighty God. And those apples are well-minded by wolves. Would you like to know he is living yet? I would sooner hear it than any word ever I heard. Welcome back, Junior Scholars. My name is Sir Bradley Hassey, guardian of the written word and your guide through the Junior Classics. Of course, our mission is to safeguard the wisdom in the classics and inspire children with a love of good reading and a real and lasting interest in Western literature, history, and scholarship. If this is your first time listening, thank you for joining us, and a very special thank you to my loyal listeners who tune in each and every episode. Today is episode four of season two, Tales from Around the World. This is our last tale in our Tales from England series, with an Irish tale called The Three Sons by Lady Gregory. Here's a few fun facts about Ireland. Ireland is an island in the North Atlantic. It is separated from Great Britain to its east by the North Channel, the Irish Sea, and St. George's Channel. Ireland is the second largest island of the British Isles, the third largest in Europe, and the 20th largest on Earth. I did not know that. As of 2011, Ireland was the second most populous island in Europe, just after Great Britain. The island is lush with vegetation, a product of its mild climate. Winters are milder than expected for such a northern land, which makes the summers cooler than those on the continent. Rainfall and cloud cover are abundant. Have you ever been to Ireland? Are you from Ireland? Send us a note and let us know. So, what makes this an Irish tale? Well, this story is all about the King of Ireland and his three sons. Moreover, we were introduced to the story through an Irish fisherman on his way to the real town of Ballinrobe. Located on the western side of Ireland, Ballinrobe became the largest and most important town in the area because they were granted special permission from King James to hold fairs and markets. I also found out that Ballinrobe means town by the river. Your mission this week, Junior Scholars, is to find Ireland and the town of Ballinrobe on a map. And now... Lost and found words! Listen carefully to these words and their meanings and try and spot them during the show. Our first word is Swan Gander. I'm pretty sure Gander was a lost and found word back in either the story of the Six Swans or the Ugly Duckling. But regardless, a Gander is a male goose, or a Swan Gander is a male swan. Our next word is a Woodcock, which is another type of bird. This is a species of wading bird. Uh, Wading means birds that walk in the water and then they dip their beak into the water for food. Most are found in the northern hemisphere. Their eyes are located on the sides of their heads, which gives them 360 degree vision, meaning they can see all around their head just from two eyes. As their common name implies, the woodcocks are woodland birds, meaning they live around and in forests. They feed at night or in the evenings, and they search for worms in soft ground with their long bills. Our next word is clout. This means a heavy blow with the hand or a hard object. Similar words to clout include smack, thump, or a punch. And our last word today is lament. Lament is a passionate expression of grief or sorrow. So a very sad, emotional expression. And now, on to the show. (music) 
Today's tale is introduced by an Irish fisherman. He knows the tale of the King of Ireland and his three sons, and is taking a wee little break from his troubles and woes to share the tale with us. The King of Ireland becomes very sick. The only thing that will cure him are apples from Burnett's orchard. The only problem is the location of Burnett's orchard is a mystery. So the king sends his three trusted sons to search for it. The sons devise a plan to search in three separate directions and then meet back in a year's time. But under the cover of trust and loyalty, some characters hatch another evil plan. They are willing to hurt those who trust them most in order to gain power. Betrayal is when a person hurts somebody who trusts them for selfish reasons. Listen carefully and see if you can observe who betrays who and why. Will the orchard be found? Will the sons make it back in time to save the king? What evil plans will rear their ugly head? All this and more on today's Junior Classic. The Three Sons by Lady Gregory. I'll tell you a story. And after that, I'll be going on the bail on the road. The one that is a shop there. And that was reared by my grandmother. It is likely will give me a tasty suit of clothes. Working all my life I am. Working with the flail in the barn. Working with the spade at the potato tilling and the potato digging. Breaking stones on the road. But enough about me. Troubles and woes. I came to tell you an Irish tale. I think it went like this. There was a king long ago in Ireland and he had three sons, and one of them was something silly. There came a sickness on the king, and he called his three sons. And he said to them that he had knowledge the only thing would cure him was the apples from Burnett's orchard. And he bade them to go look for them, for that orchard was in some faraway place, and no one could tell where it was. The three sons went out then, and they caught their horses and put on their bridles, and they set out, and went on till they came to three crossroads. There they stopped, and they settled among themselves that each one of them would take one of the roads and go searching for the apples, and they would meet at the same place at the end of a year and a day. The youngest son, that was a bit silly, took the crossest of the roads, and he went on till he came to a cottage by the roadside. He went in, and there was a withered old man in the house. There is a great welcome before the king of Ireland's son. The son was astonished at that, because he thought no one could know him. He was well received there, and in the course of the evening, he asked the old man, did he know where was Burnett's garden? I am a hundred years old and I have never heard of such a place. But I have a brother that is a hundred years older than I, and it may be he would know. So in the morning, he gave a canoe to the king's son, and it went on of itself without him turning or guiding it, till it brought him to the old man's brother, and he got a welcome there and good treatment. And in the course of the night, he asked the old man, did he know where was Burnett's orchard? I do not. Though I am two hundred years old, I never heard of it. But go on to a brother I have that has a hundred years more than myself oh, indeed he does, indeed he does. Oh, yeah. so in the morning he went into the canoe and it went on of itself 
till it came to where the third old man was, that was older again than the other two. And the king's son asked, did he know where was Burnett's garden? I do not. Oh, I am three hundred years old, but I will tell you how you will know it. Go on till you come to shore, where you will see a swan gander standing by the water. And he is the one that can tell you and can bring you to it. And ask him to bring you to the garden in the name of the Almighty God. So the king's son went on in the canoe till he came where the swan gander was standing on the shore. Can you tell me, where can I get the apples that are in Burnett's orchard? And can you bring me there? Indeed, I am in no way obliged to your leader or to whoever it was sent you to me and gave you that teaching. And those apples are well minded by wolves. And the only time they sleep is for three hours once in every seven years. And it chances they are asleep for those three hours at this time. And so I will bring you there. With that, he stretched out his wings and he bade the king's son to get on his back. And it was long before he could start flying with the weight that was on him. But at last he flew away and he brought the king's son to Burnett's garden. And there was a high wall around it, but he flew over the wall and put him down in the garden. The king's son filled his bag with the apples, and when he had done that, he went looking around, and he came to a large cottage in the garden, and he went in. And there was no one in the house but a beautiful young girl, and she was asleep. So he went away, but he brought with him the gold rings and the gold garters that he saw there in the window. He got up again on the back of the swan gander, but it was hard for it to rise with the weight of the bag of apples. But it did rise at last, and it brought him to where the old man was that was 300 years old. The king's son gave one of the apples to the old man, and no sooner did he eat it than his age left him, and he was like a boy of 15 years. He went on then, to the two other old men and gave an apple to both of them. And no sooner did they eat it than they were like young boys again. Then the king's son went back to the crossroads, for it was the end of the year and a day, and he was the first to come there, and he fell asleep. The two brothers came and saw him there, and they stole the bag of apples from under his head and put in the place of it a bag of apples that were of no use at all. Then they went on to their father's house, and they gave him the apples they had stolen, and he was cured on the moment. But they told him that what the youngest son was bringing to him was poison apples that would bring him to his death. The king was very angry when he heard that, and he went to his butler and said, Go out to the wood where my son is and shoot him and bring his heart here with you on top of a gun and throw it to the dogs at the door, for I will never have him or anything belonging to him brought into the house. So the butler got the gun and went out to the wood, and when he saw the young man, he was going to shoot him. Why would you do that? So the butler told him all the father ordered him, and the young man said, Do not shoot me, but save me. And this is what you will do. Go into the wood until you meet with the woodcock and shoot it and take the heart out of it, for that is most like the heart of a man. Bring the woodcock's heart to my father's house and throw it to the dogs at the door. So the butler did that and spared him and took the woodcock's heart and threw it to the dogs at the door. It was a good while after that a beautiful young lady came to the king's doorway in a coach and four and stopped at the door. Send out my husband to me here. So the eldest son came out to her. Was it you came to the garden for the apples? It was. What things did you take notice of in the cottage where I was? So he began telling of this thing and that thing that never was in it at all. And when she heard that, she gave him a clout that knocked his head as solid as any stone in the wall. Then the second son came out, and she asked him the same question, and he told the same lies. And she gave him another clout that left his head as solid as any stone in the wall. When the king heard all that, he knew they had deceived him, 
and that it was the youngest son who got the apples for his cure. And he began to cry after him and to lament that he was not living to come back again. Would you like to know he is living yet? I would sooner hear it than any word ever I heard. Well, he is living yet and is in the wood. When the young lady heard that, she bade the butler bring her to where he was. And they went together to the wood. And there they found him, where he had been living on the fruits of the trees through the most of the year. When the young lady saw him, she said, Was it you came to the house where Roy was in the garden? It was. What things did you take notice of in it? Here they are. And he put his hand in his pocket and brought out the gold rings and the golden garters and the other signs he had brought away. So she knew that he was the right one. And she married him, and they lived happy ever after. And there was great rejoicing in the king of Erlin's house. What we have here, junior scholars, is a story of betrayal. To betray someone means to hurt someone that trusts you, especially by lying to them. Most often, a person would betray another in order to achieve something or gain advantage for themselves. Who betrayed who in the story? The two elder sons, of course, betrayed their own family. The youngest son found the apples that would cure the king, but when he fell asleep, the elder brothers stole the apples. They then lied to the king and claimed the young son was trying to kill the king by bringing him poisoned apples. I believe the reason they did this was to gain favor with the king and then gain more power for themselves. The elder brothers were willing to steal, lie, and cheat for personal gain. The young son was almost killed because of it. What makes the brothers' betrayal especially devious is that they lied to those who would trust them the most, their own family. Every episode I sign off by encouraging you to be loyal. But who should you be loyal to? First and foremost, you should be loyal to your family. When you're in trouble, a good family will be there to help. They should be your first and last line of defense. A good family will be there for you when no one else is. So be loyal to your family and treat them right. That's all for this episode, Junior Scholars. Till next time, I am Sir Bradley. Be brave, be loyal, and speak the truth. Now for you parents out there, I want you to understand why we are doing this, what we are trying to achieve, and how you can help us. This is a rescue operation to preserve the classics and the wisdom within before it is lost forever. Our goal is to inspire children with a love of good reading by safeguarding and breathing new life into the greatest stories in history and empower you, the parents, with a resource you can trust to enrich your child's mind and spirit. We don't want these stories and the wisdom within to be forgotten so our children don't have to learn these lessons on their own. The most important thing you can do for us is to spread the message and tell others about these stories and what we are doing. If you want to donate, we would love that as well. My promise is that 100% of donations will go to building the impact and quality of the Junior Classics. If you have feedback and thoughts on how we can do things better, please send an email to juniorclassicspodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening to the Junior Classics.